Um, hi, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the role of supply chain in the e-commerce business. Um, before I delve into the nitty gritties of the role of supply chain, here is a little bit about myself. So right now I'm working as the uh, application product manager in the business systems team at Google. Uh, previously, I had work experience in companies like Walmart and Edgeware. Uh, in the supply chain, e-commerce, and retail domain. And um, I have also had consulting experience for clients like Apple and Syngenta. And uh, so all in all, I have a decade-long experience in e-commerce, supply chain systems, retail technologies, um, and uh, overall implementation experience. So let me get into uh, why an agile and resilient supply chain is necessary for your e-commerce business. So let's first understand what e-commerce is, right? So as Investopedia explains, e-commerce or electronics commerce refers to companies and individuals that buy and sell goods and services over the internet. It's simple terms, it means running an online business. And uh, since today with the advent of uh, internet, Almost any transaction can occur through e-commerce websites today. Nothing is offline anymore, which makes the e-commerce business very competitive. Going into a little bit uh, into the history of e-commerce, the history of e-commerce goes back to the early 1990s. The e-commerce phenomenon kicked off in 1991 when the online world became more recognizable. E-commerce businesses can occur through different channels such as B2B, B2C, B2G, you name it, there are different channels today. And we will talk more about uh, the details of these channels in the upcoming slides. And by the end of 2001, business to business, which is a B2B model, it became the most effective domain of e-commerce as it roughly made around $700 billion in revenue. So you can imagine that by the end of 2001, the e-commerce space had already exploded. Now we can trace the growth of e-commerce businesses from 2001 on onwards. Uh, if we speak about its growth in the last decade, according to Google Trends, it has remained steady with nominal fluctuations since 2008 until about 15, 16. However, the trend of e-commerce began to grow with a promising incline since uh, 2016 and 2017. And since then, more and more businesses began to create their online presence in order to grow in today's digital landscape. Uh, today, it is like infathomab infathomable to even imagine that you can have a business and not have a website or an interface of it with the customers. That is, that is a given for any businesses that you want to start today or they're existing in the current market. The best-selling products that are emerging from uh, categories like music, books, computers, office supplies, and consumer electronics. So these are the best-selling products in these product lines. Now, therefore, in order to get a product into the hands of a customer, it is imperative that not only the website, but the supporting supply chain and system should be robust. What I mean by this is it's not only uh, enough to provide a website and provide a seamless checkout experience and uh, give you the uh, search capabilities and cutting edge uh, uh, website uh, trends. It's it's in fact more important that you have inventory in your uh, warehouses or wherever you are sourcing your products from. And uh, the entire supply chain and when supply chain picture is robust and you have proper system to support those. Otherwise, only having a, a interface with your customers with uh, not enough inventory and not able to fulfill those orders is not going to help. So there should be a healthy combination of backend supply chain system and the fronted UI applications. Uh, what is the importance of e-commerce in today's world, right? E-commerce offers a number of benefits over brick and mortar stores. It allows customers to easily find their desired products through a large database. They can research the product beforehand, compare prices, learn more, more from customer reviews, and then buy it once their concerns are rectified by the online customer support representative. Going to the next slide, this is kind of an in infographic showing how e-commerce uh, e-commerce businesses run today, right? Uh, if you can see that you have a storefront where uh, you have your uh, different items that are uh, showing in a UI, and then you can um, you ac access those UI through your computer. Definitely, you need a computer or a mobile to access um, 
website or a online store. And once you have uh, decided on which product you want to buy, you put it in your cart. And once you have put it in your cart, uh, if there are any sale or any discounts or if there are any auctions, you avail those and then you check out with your payment card or any other uh, payment methodologies if mm -hmm. you have enrolled in a firm or things like that. Once that is done, um, you check out and then you buy that product and then your order is tracked uh, in the website and then it is fulfilled by um, a warehouse, like all those things happen in the background, but this is more of a um, e-commerce website experience. And then you have 24 seven support in case you are not able to track your online order or you have more questions about when it is arriving and things like that. So this is how e-commerce has evolved over a period of time and how, how easy it has become for you to order something from a click uh, from your home. So it's that easy. Moving to e-commerce classification, uh, there are like different kind of uh, e-commerce businesses today, but the four notable ones are business to business commerce, uh, business to consumer e-commerce, consumer to consumer e-commerce, and consumer to business e-commerce. So what are, what are these different kind of businesses, right? So B2B e-commerce basically refers to trading goods or services from one business to another. So it's between business to business. The B2B model promotes online businesses to interchange goods with each other. For instance, a manufacturer sells his good to a wholesaler who then sells it to the retailer. In this scenario, the manufacturer and the wholesaler are follow following the B2B model. Then what is B2C e-commerce? It's exactly as the name suggests, right? In the B2C e-commerce model, a business sells the goods or services directly to the individual customers online. So with the help of B2C model, the customers can view and purchase the desired products from the retailer's online store. To give you a couple of examples, Amazon is an excellent example of B2C e-commerce model as the sale individual goods to individual customers. And uh, there have been many uh, B2C companies that have taken the market by storms like Expedia, Ikea, uh, Netflix even, uh, because uh, you, are, you, are, you are able to stream any kind of movie or series you want to uh, stream today, right? So moving on to the next one, consumer to consumer or peer to peer e-commerce. Here basically uh, the different customers uh, can talk to one another or do business with one another, right? It allows a customer to sell their goods and services to other customers with the help of the internet. Makes perfect sense in today's digital landscape. In simple terms, this is like mobile e-commerce. The uh, C2C e-commerce model allows an individual to sell their assets online, for example, car, house, or bike to other individuals. eBay or OLX is a great example of the uh, C2C e-commerce model that is running successfully. Uh, finally, consumer to business e-commerce, it is an interesting model which allows an individual customer to sell goods and services to a business. It follows the reverse path of the B2C model where businesses create products and services for the end user. For instance, if you're a software architect or if you're consulting or if you have some niche skill sets that you are able to provide or someone is in need of those skill sets, um, you can showcase in potential businesses on platforms like uh, Favor or Upwork. So these are the different e-commerce businesses that we have today. Moving on, what are the top examples of e-commerce business, right? Now, there are some pretty major examples of e-commerce businesses that have made it big, including Amazon, Flipkart, eBay, and Mintra. Uh, going a little bit into a uh, couple of examples like Amazon.com. Amazon.com is one of the best example of thriving e-commerce business that initially began as a retailing platform. However, with the passage of time, they moved their operations online and became one of the largest e-commerce platforms in the world. Now, and a thing to note is although the headquarter is located in the US, Amazon established different websites in various developed countries such as UK, Canada, France, Germany, uh, Japan, China, even India, right? And Amazon.com supports and offers retail websites for various popular organizations, including Mars and Spencer's, Lacoste, NBA, Beep Stores, Target, etc. The another kind of e-commerce business is Wabi Parker. Wabi Parker is an American online eyewear retailer that is headquartered in New York City. They primarily sell prescription glasses and sunglasses through their website. However, they also have more than 80 retail stores in the US and Canada. 
The third one is ASOS. ASOS, which stands for As Seen on Screen, is a fashion brand that showcases the latest trends as seen on celebrities. Since the e-commerce company boomed into a multi-billion dollar business, it has suddenly learned which marketing campaigns are the most effective. So this is at a high level, what are some of the e-commerce businesses out there which have made it big uh, in this landscape, right? Now, what are the different types of e-commerce business? Um, one of them is drop shipping. Here, you don't have to store your inventory. So you are basically uh, don't have to bear any kind of inventory carrying cost. So the drop shipping business allows you to purchase a product once you have already made a sale and have been paid by the customer. Once you get paid, you can purchase a product from a third party manufacturer or a supplier and ship the product directly to the customer. With a drop shipping model, the store owner don't have to worry about ever seeing or handling the inventory. So like I mentioned, no, no inventory carrying costs, no need to bother about, hey, I have to like, uh, get rid of my inventory if it is not, if it is low selling and things like that. Then the second one is wholesaling and warehousing. An interesting business model that allows you to purchase products in bulk and stock the inventory is warehousing. So here you are basically in charge of the inventory and you are actually storing those. The wholesaling business model gets you better prices simply because you are buying the product in a bulk and not making a one of purchase, unlike uh, the previous model that we talked about. Though you can do, uh, shipments like bulk shipments and drop shipping also now this b2b model the whole selling b2b model allows the business to sell goods in a large volume and when do they make a profit right because they have uh, huge volumes of inventory so the wholesaler sells the goods to the retailer who then sells it for a profit you also sell the good individually on your website in order to enjoy better profit margin so you can define the different channels uh, that you want to sell your goods because you are in charge of your inventory. So that gives you a lot of flexibility here. Now, the third one is manufacturing and white labeling. The manufacturing business model has stood its ground since decades, right? And this B2B model gets paid to create the good. As far as white labeling is concerned, you are not technically developing the product yourself. Instead, you are licensing or subcontracting it, which allows you to put your brand's name on it as if you are the owner and creator of that product. And finally, subscription e-commerce. Unlike a traditional e-commerce business where one transaction takes place, the subscription business model allows the customer to subscribe to a plan in order to receive regular deliveries of the subscription box. Moving to uh, the next slide, and here I'll talk about what does an end-to-end -end supply chain look like? End-to-end -end supply chain involves an entirely integrated process from product design and procurement of raw materials then scheduling production and then final delivery of finished product to the customer. It is further extended to after sales service and reverse logistics depending upon the nature of the business. Now, what are the different uh, stages uh, in an end-to-end -end supply chain, right? Uh, so you have to plan for your product. You have to, based on historical sales or based on benchmarking of similar products that have been sold in the past, you do demand and supply planning of the products that you want to sell or buy. Once you have made that uh, uh, demand and supply planning, you source and procure the materials from different vendors. So supplier selection and creation of purchase order based on your supply plan is the second step in this end-to-end -end supply chain process. Now, based on your purchase orders, the vendors can uh, like your company uh, can either manufacture the products in-house or they will like buy it or contract it to some other vendors who are specialized in the uh, manufacturing of this particular product that you are trying to sell. And once that uh, shipment of goods is ready, then you have to go through uh, inbound logistics, inventory management and transportation step. What that, what that means is the a uh, manufacturer can sell send, send the shipments via ocean, rail, or, uh, or air, depending upon how important uh, the shipment is to you. Now, depending upon the mode of transportation, the cost will vary. So if you are uh, procuring it via air, then it will be the most costly. If you are going via ocean, it will be the least costly and things like that. And that is where the transportation cost comes into picture. You have to decide how do you want to procure your goods and services from the manufacturer, whether it is in-house or contract manufacturer, so that your cost is manageable. And at the same time, you are able to fulfill the orders of your customers. And then inventory management. 
when you are like getting the shipment from your uh, manufacturing location you have to put it in some warehouse location where you want to sell your products from let's say for example you're procuring your goods and services from let's say india or vietnam and you want to store it in us then you have to decide where exactly you want to store it what are the storage space what is the cost of storing the inventory and are you able to track your inventory systematically so that there is you are able to track each and every product that has come as part of the shipment and then inbound logistics is overall um, procuring of inventory from your contract manufacturer to your warehouse that entire step is called inbound logistics now once uh, you are able to pro secure your products into your warehouse you can you, you are in a position to sell those products to your uh, customers and there can be different channels like we just discussed it can be b2b b2g b2c uh, depending on what, whatever channels you are in right so you have to pick pack and ship those goods from your warehouse to your customer location depending upon whether it's a b2b channel or a b2c channel and again there will be transportation cost involved here uh, and this is called as forward logistics and your strategy is based on the channels like online b2b and whatnot but uh, it's the the end to end supply chain does not end here after you have sold the uh, and sold the product and transported the product to your end customer right there is something called after sales service now you have to make sure that the end customer has actually received it because it is very essential to provide a seamless customer experience so that they keep coming back to you to buy more products right that is how you will make a profit in the long run of the business and then reverse logistics which is the most important part of uh, the supply chain like you have to take care if there are any returns repairs or replacements this is very important because uh, this is where you seal the customer confidence in your whole supply chain process right say for example i got a product and i don't like uh, the product it is damaged or it is under warranty so i would like a seamless uh, returns or repair experience well because i have paid mm -hmm. uh, paid my money uh, to buy this product from your uh, from your website so that is what an end to end supply chain looks like and to optimize the end to end supply chain the above components needs to be well integrated we cannot uh, not, not e e even any even a single step cannot work in silo that is what an integrated supply chain looks like it requires an enterprise resource planning erp system that provides real time information with visibility across the supply chain. There are a lot of ERP solutions in the market today. For demand and planning, you can maybe look at Anaplan JDA and whatnot. And for core ERP supply chain for your inventory and financials, uh, large companies have implemented uh, solutions like Oracle, SAP, and whatnot. So depending upon the requirements of your business and what kind of uh, software you want to implement that give you the best possible outcome mm -hmm. uh, in terms of business value, you have to take a decision with your internal system team and external uh, implementation partner and take that call accordingly. These are some of the best approaches or uh, that can help optimize the supply chain, right? Better prediction of customer needs by implementing monitoring tool lean approach to inventory management to reduce waste and unwanted actions this will speed up the order fulfillment process and increase inventory accuracy human resource planning to respond to sudden changes in the supply chain root cause analysis to identify issues in the current process and design effective solutions implement end-to-end -end benchmarking to measure the efficacy of the supply chain now what are the benefits of an end-to-end -end supply chain with an integrated end-to-end -end supply chain design and visibility across the supply chain, businesses can better serve customer. The benefits are uh, some of some of the benefits are like this: like you you get to provide seamless flow of activities across the supply chain. You will able to track each and every step in your supply chain if you have better systems implemented, reducing delays with the ability to detect any issues across the supply chain. Let's say, for example, there are different touch points of handover. Say, for example, your manufacturer is saying that, hey, I have sent out the shipment from a factory, but your system has, is yet to receive that shipment. It's not showing on your system. So you will have to, you will have that visibility, okay, uh, even though the manufacturer, manufacturer is saying that, hey, this shipment has left my warehouse, but it is yet to show in the system. So you cannot take really the next action on that. So you have to make these processes very tightly integrated and provide visibility to all the handoffs in this entire supply chain you you will have a better relationship with your suppliers and customers because you are able to track each and every step uh, with these stakeholders right 
you will have complete visibility of uh, all the steps that can reduce risks operating cost and predict and plan to meet the needs of market changes so essentially uh, like having a robust system infrastructure will help you whether any kind of unforeseen circumstances like uh, covid or if for example something is stuck and you 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 are like very resilient in responding to these different market changes and there will be transparency and ability to view blind spots there are no offline transactions everything is systematic and you are able to take a call and do historical analysis of the different transactions that have taken place for your business reduce labor and material cost by removing waste in the process now moving on this is a pictorial representation of what an end to end supply chain look like like i said you plan uh, uh, what amount of or what quantity of goods and services uh, you need to manufacture or in house or you want to give an order to some vendor or contract manufacturer depending upon the kind of business you are in so you have to plan and align your supply chain process resources you can leverage any kind of software tools to create your demand plan create your supply plan and then you create your requirement document then you source based on this plan you source it and then you manage different material categories you manage your suppliers and then you order the materials from them by cutting a purchase order creating a material list that hey i need this 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 product lines with this 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 quantity and this is the cost of each of these and based on that uh, lead time uh, they will make uh, either you are making it in house or you are uh, getting it done by a vendor or supplier they will schedule the production they will assemble the product they will perform quality testing hey everything is looking good or not and then they will deliver the product and this is where you have to do manage your inbound logistics and warehousing where you want to get the product and store it in your warehouses you have to plan and manage this inbound material you have to operate your warehouses uh you have to if you, if you are in a b2c channel you have to open your shipment and uh, uh store it in the warehouse accordingly or if you are in the b2b channel you may may not even choose to open it right and then you operate the outbound transportation and finally if uh, there are any return processes you find that uh, after opening the shipment from your uh, from your suppliers you feel like some of them are damaged so you should have systematic return processes implemented you receive and credit return product refurbish or scrap return product and these are some of the processes that should have been implemented to uh, account for this kind of uh, processes and finally enable so it's it's very essential that you have uh, good reporting capability since you are storing all this data in your databases you should have uh, uh, and your if your management is tracking different kpis you can create dashboards operational dashboards and executive dashboards depending upon the requirements of your business so that you can do trend analysis of which is your best performing product or uh, how the sales have been doing year on year week on week month on month things like that uh, based on all this analysis you can deploy your supply chain strategy you can do your uh, sales and operation planning for next year and this will give you a robust end to end supply chain uh, management capability now i have taken couple of examples of uh, the large scale uh, e-commerce businesses and how they manage their uh, businesses in the in the current landscape right so first one of the examples is wayfair so wayfair is an e-commerce platform that sells furniture appliances and other home related products the company works with hundreds of brands such as bosch kohler samsung three post and many more on top of that wayfair owns and operates a few lifestyle brands namely joss and main all modern berry gold bartlin etc lastly the company also sells wayfair branded items that are only available on its platform how does wayfair makes money wayfair makes money from the sale of products installation services advertising on its platform as well as interchange and interest fees the company initially operated primarily on a drop shipping model it has ever since pivoted wholesale cost business model in which it purchases items in bulk and sells them at a profit now like i have been maintaining that how important our back end systems and a logistic infrastructure is essential for your e-commerce business to succeed right so let's take a look at how wayfair manages their logistic infrastructure Wayfair's logistics network was built specifically for the home category where items can be bulky, heavy, and prone to damage. 
by building its own infrastructure, Wayfair reduces shipping time, minimizes damage during shipping, and saves cost per shipping in bulk. The goal of the logistic investment is to get closer to today and ultimately want a shipping on as many products as possible. The logistic network is end to end from supplier to doorstep, and their logistic network comprises of three main parts right? international supply chain. Products from international supply, mostly in China, are aggregated at consolidation centers where they are packed into shipping containers before being transported to ports and delivered directly to Castle Gate location. What are Castle Gate locations? Wayfair fulfillment centers enable suppliers to forward position their inventory in warehouses close to customers, enabling two day shipping. Wayfair receives fees from suppliers who are using Castle Gate inventory management and fulfillment services. About 20% of orders are fulfilled through Castlegate, and this production is increasing. The remaining orders are fulfilled by Wayfair's historical method, where orders are dropshipped directly from suppliers and delivered by external carriers like UPS, FedEx, etc., or any third-party trucking or last-mile home delivery agents. And finally, Wayfair Delivery Network. Wayfair ships the majority of large parcels by directly managing middle-mile and last-mile deliveries enabling shorter delivery times, higher quality deliveries, less damage, better service, and more accurate delivery tracking. Going to the next slide, this is a, a pictorial representation of how Wayfair Delivery Network has been able to reduce the number of touches and the delivery time as compared to the tra traditional dropship model for large parcel example. So as you can see in uh, Wayfair model, they have consolidated uh, the warehouses and their docks and they do full truckload transportation for only Wayfair products and uh, Wayfair last mile delivery agent or third party then transports the goods to the end customer in New York or wherever uh, the customer is based out of. Earlier, uh, there were multiple stops in the traditional dropship model, as you can see. Uh, there were different touch points, multiple stops and carrying non-Wayfair products. So this led to a lot of delay and uh, the entire supply chain was longer than what was anticipated. So this is how Wayfair has optimized the delivery systems, which is a great example of why you should have robust systems and capability to support your online e-commerce business. Moving to the next example, which is Home Depot. With over 2,300 physical stores in North America, accompanied by a strong online presence, the Home Depot business model is focused on the sale of tools, construction products, appliances, and services for home improvement projects. And how does Home Depot makes its money? Home Depot makes most of its money through sales of home improvement goods and related services. Home Depot sells a wide range of building materials, decorative products, home improvement goods, garden and lawn products, and whatnot. And they generate massive revenue from the sale of these products. Home Depot offers professional services to its customers through its vast network of professional contractors, tradesmen, remodelers, and small business owners that assist its customers. They help customers to handle small and complicated home improvement projects. So this is how Home Depot make their money through sales and through their installation services and, and uh, other channels, right? Now coming to their supply chain fulfillment network. So Home Depot has an omni-channel supply chain fulfillment network. Digital is unequivocally Home, De home Depot's fastest growing business, but online sales growth is actually being facilitated by the company's brick and mortar store network. Around 40% of Home Depot's digital sales are fulfilled by the physical stores. The Home Depot retail strategy has emerged as one that combines elements of both online as well as uh, stores channel to drive sales growth. The fulfillment option that Home Depot currently offers are BOPIS, buy online, pick up and store, BORIS, buy online, return to store, and buy online, ship to store, online, only channel fulfillment options. So, what I'm trying to get at is Home Depot has actually bridged the gap between their online business and their offline offline distribution network by implementing an omni-channel supply chain fulfillment network. And they have been able to achieve it through different uh, methodologies like Bupis. You can buy online and you can just come in and pick up in store. And this has been implemented across all the uh, e-commerce businesses today. And then Boris, you can buy online and you can return it in a store as well. And uh, yeah, and then and they are also trying to get into other methodologies like BODFS, like buy online and then deliver from store. Home Depot's uh, omnichannel supply chain fulfillment strategy is exemplary, and it hasn't just been built by a great focus on accommodating the rapid growth of its e-commerce capabilities. Rather, that 
Home has restructured its whole supply chain network in order to integrate the experiences of in-store and online commerce. And this is a pictorial representation of one home demo experience or omni-channel home depot experience, as you would uh, call it. Um, they have stores which drive greater convenience and speed for customers. They have associates which maintain a competitive and agile workforce. They have interconnected experience. They try to create the best interconnected experience by harmonizing uh, the experience between stores and online. This improves personalization as well as enhances website ease of use like search, user experience, etc. Then product and innovation, uh, definitely, if your product is not good, then you won't sell it, right? So they maintain the position as number one retailer and product authority. They optimize their assortments, advance localization, and first to market approach, expand decor categories online. And they have, like I said, they make their uh, revenue through professional services as well. They deliver their one integrated approach for their pro customers. They build new personalized B2B web experience, broaden assortment, and expand interconnected experience for services. And of course, supply chain and delivery, which is one of the most important key of the end-to-end -end supply chain experience. They offer fast and most efficient delivery and home improvement. They have expanded same day and next day delivery option, open additional fulfillment centers for faster customer deliveries and whatnot. And this is uh, one of the last examples that we would walk you through, uh, which is the Uber Eats uh, business model. Um, everyone knows what Uber Eats is, uh, since most of us uses Uber uh, for our day-to-day -day transportation. Uber Eats is a three-sided marketplace connecting a driver, a restaurant owner, and a customer with Uber Eats platform at the center. The three-sided marketplace moves around three players. Restaurants play commission on the orders to Uber Eats. Customers pay the small delivery charges and at times cancellation free. Drivers are through making reliable deliveries on time. The ambition of Uber Eats is to become the go-to last mile delivery platform. It started with food delivery, but it aspires to become the go-to place for last mile delivery. And like I mentioned, they have this complex three-sided network dynamics between eaters, restaurants, and drivers. The existing underlying platform gives riders and drivers additional options. Like Uber, Uber Eats distribution leverages on a solid brand and infrastructure, which have been stretching open, built over the years, and a playbook to connect local and national policymakers to stabilize the service holders. And this is a pictorial representation of your customer basically uh, places an order through Uber Eats. Um, Uber Eats has uh, its, its uh, network with the restaurant partners. They place the orders with them and then a delivery partner will pick up the order from the restaurant and deliver it to the customer who places the order. Online. Now, these are some of the key, channel, key challenges that are faced by firms in the e-commerce space today, right? Uh, data security, online identity verification, attracting the perfect customer, customer experience, seamless customer checkout and whatnot, customer loyalty, uh, customers should come to your uh, websites for buying certain goods and services and not go to other customers with the plethora of options that, uh, that are available to them. Converting shoppers into paying customers, keeping the prices competitive, having effective inventory management strategies. You should have the stock in place for the <clears throat> Uh, products that you're trying to sell through your website, right? Otherwise, the customers will move to some other website. You have to keep in mind the shipping costs that you're getting from your contract manufacturers. You should have effective technology and infrastructure management. You should have effective product return and refund policies. And you should have good omni-channel strategies as well so that to bridge the gap between online and uh, offline um, uh, e-commerce marketplaces. And then finally, you have to invest in sustainability to make sure that you are not causing unnecessary harm to the nature that we are thriving in, right? So finally, how can an e-commerce product manager help? The one, these are some of the roles and responsibilities of an e-commerce product manager on a day-to-day -day basis, right? You ensure that e-commerce sites run smoothly. There is no glitch or uh, there is no issues with the interface that you are providing to your customers. You are able to build robust systems to handle inventory and financials. You invest in systems that provide end-to-end -end visibility of a given product life cycle. You define efficient processes in conjunction with your stakeholders. You aim for a true omnichannel experience. The different examples that we spoke about, everyone was investing in an omnichannel experience because that is the need of the hour. The demands and the feedback of the customers are heard. This is how you will uh, make your customers loyal to your products and to your e-commerce business. Ensure that the quality of the new products are as per industry standards. Develop product strategy based on the prevalent state of e-commerce business and create your product roadmaps. 
you create a high level of website mobile app functionality and deliver the optimal user experience you should have different channels uh, in conjunction and working in tandem with one another your uh, mobile experience should be similar to your desktop experience you assess business developers in analyzing all the business requirements and coordinate your efforts to increase the businesses this is how as an e-commerce product manager we can help this entire end to end experience seamless and what are some of the key takeaways from the presentation today you should know what your customers want and implement in your systems with the help of your internal uh, stakeholders like your engineering counterparts and your ux designers counterpart right you should be able to provide personalized experience to your customers so that they keep coming back to your website to order more and then finally ensure your supply chain is agile backed by robust systems and infrastructure and we saw a lot of examples of the companies who are doing this really well so that's all from uh, today's presentation and please let me know if you have any questions thank you so much